Yeah, it's it's really stressful being sat on the start line of Henley Royal Regatta, although less and, less or so perhaps than in previous years, given the lack of activity that's happening at Temple Island. But any race is nerve-wracking, right? And especially Henley, which represents the pinnacle of most of these athlete seasons. All you want to do is execute your race plan as, as best as possible and just keep your head in your boat, focus on what you can control and, and forget about the variables. And I think both of these crews are actually pretty evenly matched. Explosive energy off the start as both crews try and get their boat speed up to maximum speed as quickly as possible. So it's all about holding your line in the first couple hundred meters alongside Temple Island, trying to get out into that rhythm. Borlase crew looking great there in unison, moving together, fully committed. It's a historic year for Borlase. I think this is the most or the largest number of crews they've had in the regatta proper in their history. So really great to see that program flourishing. Of course, they were dominant in the Fawley Challenge Cup in the middle half of the last decade. Fallen away slightly on the sculling scene, but fantastic to see an eight out in the Princess Elizabeth Challenge Cup. I suppose it's trying to create that breadth, isn't it? So you can actually compete in both. You've got to start somewhere. It doesn't just happen overnight. As they did with the quad, it took a number of years before they started winning that. Uh, and maybe this is a project that will be ongoing because these young athletes here that compete today, this is their first Henley Regatta. So just getting that insight, you know, that experience, which is so important when you come to those big races as you kind of move through the regatta into the kind of quarters, semis, and eventually finals. Exactly. The experience is so intangible, but actually one of the most valuable things to have, especially when racing at Henley in the unique sort of environment that it presents to you, is, is the experience of knowing how to cope with the spectators on the bank, the demarcation of the booms, the one-on-one -on -one match racing, which really doesn't happen on the domestic scene apart from at Henley. So experience is absolutely crucial, Mark. You're totally right. And these crews would have potentially raced each other on the domestic circuit as well this year. So. You know, and what's interesting about Henley is that dual kind of race, isn't it? You know, that one-on-one, -on -one, you know, side-by-side. -side. There's not six, four, four other boats around you. It's that uniqueness of racing one-on-one. -on -one. You can see Borlase there in the rhythm now. Just trying to keep in contention with Bedford, who are a length in front as we move towards the barrier. You'll see from the images on your left-hand side, the barrier. <laughs> Looks like Bedford Modern School have got relative control of this race. And in an eight, a length is a fairly long way. But we are at a premature stage in this race. Yeah, it's very early on. Obviously, they want to capitalise on that kind of margin they have. They have clear water now, as you can see from the boats on the images below, on the screen. And it's just trying to stay composed, isn't it? Not getting flustered, doing your thing, going through your processes, standing your bubble, and making sure you keep that distance between you and your opposition. And Mark, you'll know this much better than I would, but how important is clear water at Henley, especially in the match racing one-on-one -on -one type of dynamic? Yeah, well, it's kind of out of sight, out of mind, if you want to think of it in that way. So the, the earlier you get in front, uh, the, the earlier you're making your position have to look around to see where you are. And it's always interesting when you have this side-by-side -side race, and there's always a moment when someone will look in a crew, and it'll like be a look of, we can get them, or a look of fear, they've gone too far. So. It's always interesting to look so if we can get those images at some point with who's going to make that look. Obviously, being an eight, they have a Cox who will be relaying that information and just trying to keep their crew, you know, in the right frame of mind so they stand positive rather than looking at the negative of being behind. Have you got any views on the way that the boats are kind of rigged here, Tom? You know, the kind of bucket rig here in an age. You know, what's your preference on that? You're probably pitching beyond my expertise here, Mark. I think the bucket rigs are, are, are curious. I, I don't fully have a technical understanding of why why people tend to do that. I think I'd always go for a conventional rig if I was going to coach an eight, but I was a sculler when I was a junior, Mark, so to be honest, <laughs> my knowledge of a bucket, non-bucket is pretty limited. It's just always interesting that we go for these fads of like, the in thing, isn't it? And then it will go back to a convention, I'm sure, at some point. Yeah, exactly. R rowing, like all things, right, is cyclical. And I think 
people people always revert back to the one two one two one two. But 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 the bucket ring, if that works for the type of athletes you've got in the boat, if you've got two particularly strong stroke siders who sit you know sort of behind each other, you're going to rig it that way. So it just depends on the athletes and the physiological composition of the crew. You see Borle still keeping the cadence or the rate up. They still feel, obviously, they have an opportunity here by trying to stand as contention with Bedford, who are leading this race at this point. And as I said, this is their first time racing the regatta, so that experience, we keep talking about how important that is, you know, with any athlete when you compete at an event for the first time. Yeah, I was meandering through through the stewards enclosure this morning and, and sort of caught ISIS versus Cambridge. And the ISIS Cox was really trying to galvanise her crew despite the fact they were sort of two or three lengths behind Cambridge. And it just got me to thinking, that is a really tough job. When you are a Cox in a crew who are clearly in deficit, having to actually spur the crew on and, and make the right calls to try and drive a comeback, that's an incredibly difficult job because you're feeling as sort of... I suppose not negative, but you're feeling as down as, as perhaps any of the other rowers, but you have to almost elevate yourself above that. So it's a tough job being a cox, it really is. It's, it's a skill to have, isn't it? To, to be able to motivate people when you can see the shape of the, the race progressing and maybe losing touch or, you know, gaining touch, basically, depending where you are. But as you see, Bedford Modern still had the margin of probably a length of clear water between them and Borlaes as they come into the regatta enclosures. Yeah, it's going to take something mighty from Borlaes to overhaul Bedford Modern at this stage, although, of course, that's probably the commentator's curse at this point. But you can just see the umpires launch in the middle of the river. You see Borlaes have just moved across a little bit. And that's one thing that you don't really want to do, isn't it, when you're behind, is you want to stay out of the dirty water. We don't want to be in someone's puddles. We want to make sure it's not affecting our boat speed if we are trying to come back on terms. Exactly. Every touch on that rudder is like a break on the boat. So ideally, you want to be straight as an arrow all the way down the course, not having to think about the steering. And in an A, there's no real excuse for deviating from your line. You know, you've got a cox whose job it is to keep the boat straight and keep the boat sort of in line with the, the, the lane that you're supposed to be in. So, yeah. I don't think it's going to affect the outcome of the race, but yeah, it's going to be a mess up this one. Fairly well wrapped up. And you can hear the spectators, you know, kind of clapping the crew as they come past. You know, there'll be some Bedford modern, modern school parents, I'm sure, in the Stewart's enclosure, watching their boys race today. And obviously the Cox in the young lady, which is great. We can have you know, both sexes across each discipline. as Bedford Modern School coming to the finish line. You'll hear the beep as they cross the line and win that heat at the Princess Elizabeth Challenge Cup. So they'll progress on to tomorrow's racing. And there's Sir William Borlay just crossing the line. So that was a win for Bedford Modern School over Sir William Borlay.